Yeah, all right. Um, so looking ahead to France, um, when you played in here in Dublin, were you a performance? Is there much of a sense of regret that you didn't get at least at that point out of that game? Yeah, of course, you know, I thought we played really well. I thought we caused problems. I mean, defensively sound, like, really good. Um, looking back on it, you think we could have nicked something, but that's football, isn't it? They're a top-quality side, and you know how good they are, and we know we have to go do a same performance away from home now. Yeah, but how much confidence can you take as well that you were so close to getting results in that game? Yeah, exactly. You know, we've seen a few clips of what we've done previous, you know, and they keep showing us things, showing us how good we can be how many problems we've caused them attacking-wise. And so I think the confidence is high. I think we know what we can do. I think we know we can cause problems. We just have to be at our best. Uh, just in terms of Evan Ferguson coming in off like that hat-trick the weekend, uh, how much of an interest that gives the group when you have someone coming into the camp in such good form? Uh, I th I, it's probably different for each player. I know how good he is. We all know how good he is. So it's no surprise. So it doesn't change much. But it's it's good seeing someone like that. You know, it's good seeing an Irish person up there scoring a hat trick. It's lovely to see. So wasn't for him, but he, let's hope he can do it for us on the, against France. Kevin, uh, Nathan, how are things? Yeah, good. Uh, can you maybe talk to us a little bit about the mental challenge of playing against forwards of the quality of France, I mean, from just a, a concentration point of view? Yeah, it's probably the hardest part in the game. More, it's probably mentally more uh, harder than physical was. You know, I think you know what you're against. You know how good they can be, and if you switch off for a split second, they're gonna they're gonna uh, hurt you. But um, it's what I've said before. It's what you want to do as a footballer. You want to play against the best. You want to try test yourself against the best, and this is the stage to do it on. So I'm relishing uh, the challenge. So I'm looking forward to it. And then it probably helps massively that you're playing for every league level just kind of to get used to that standard block. Yeah, I've been playing Premier League in the last two seasons, actually. So, yeah, so I'm looking forward to the game, anyway. And then just lastly, I mean, as a team, you did a good job of shopping Mbappe in March. Did that Yeah, of course, you know, I think we've seen, as I said, we've seen clips, we've seen loads before of it. We know what we've done, we know defensively how good we've been. So, we each need to do the same thing again and be at our best. Stephen? Nathan, how's it going? Um, just to ask you first about that France game, and we've seen it again, already getting done by a long-range goal. How is that? Or how do you plan to stop something like that happening again? I think if we look back at the goal, there's loads of little things you can you can look at and stop before it. Um, I think looking back at it now, it's a great finish. You know, at the same time, sometimes you have to hold your hand up and say good finish. But we've looked back at it, we've seen little things before the goal, even like the, from the start of the start of the movement. So there's loads of things we can stop before it, and on the goal, it's a great finish at the end of the day. But we know we can do better before it. It seems to be unfortunately a bit of a, a I suppose people may be touring against what's going on with the manager at the moment and not happening with the results. How do you think you can change people's minds over these two games? Because they're two very difficult games, France and the Netherlands. Yeah, of course, we know how tough they are, but I've said uh, the manager gives me so much confidence, the staff give me so much confidence, so I'm going into the game full of confidence, full of ready to go for them, you know, ready to go to war for them and put in the best performance we can. And listen, if we play any way that we did uh, from home, you know, they're going to have to be really good as well on the day to beat us, so it's going to be a good game. Paris is a place I think a lot of Irish fans will remember well because of our going there, putting you a good performance against the odds. How do you think you could go about beating this France team? I think I said before we caused so many problems last time, you know, and defensively really good. And I think if we're defensively really good again, I think I, th I honestly feel like we have the quality in the squad to go hurt them and get something out of this game. It's probably just about keeping the first thirty minutes, trying to keep your your clean sheet intact because you took a while to go into the game, but then you did. Yeah, or maybe first three minutes we get a goal or something, you know, put them on the back foot, you know what I mean? Gavin, come and skip please. Thank you, Just back to Evans Hatcher, because it's so rare for an Irish striker to go forward or double. Um, how difficult is it to score a hat trick in the Premier League when you set a match to do so? Um, yeah, it's no, for me, conceding a hat trick is not nice, so there's that. Uh, of course, it's, it's, it's really hard. He has to take his chance, he's took his chances. Um, to, and it's rare you get more than three chances in a game as a strike, especially in the Premier League. So to take his three chances is done unbelievable there. Um, but yeah, it's, it's one of the hardest things to do in football, easily, 100%, especially in the Premier League, one of the best leagues in the world. So all credit to him, he deserves it. Um, not really. I wasn't. It's fair. Looking at, it, I wasn't surprised. I seen the first. I was like, I could go score a few more here. Now I was watching a bit. You know, they were causing a lot of problems, and we know how good Brighton are. You know, and you know you'll get chances at the end of the game. So, um, I'm buzzing for him. Of course, you know he deserves it, and let's hope he continues. Sam McDonald. Uh, Nathan, just even looking compared to the last window, and um, Dara's got moved to the Premier League. Andrew just last week. 
um, Don Egan's back up and you're starting playing rugby. How much can that help, Justin? And is there a nice sort of competition and sort of rivalry between you all as well? Yeah, I think so. I think it's good in training. You know, I think the standard going up is obviously better. It's causing more competition. It's causing the standard in training to go up. It's causing everyone to push each other. And then, um, especially as defenders, they're pushing me. You know, Dara and John, seeing them back in there is obviously nice to see. You obviously want to do the best individually, but as a collective, as in a team, it's good to see players back up there. You know, and we know how good the squad is. We know they should be up there. We know players should deserve to be playing in the Premier League. So it's good that they're showcasing it now. Just on that. Um when you were younger, it's still to play right wing back. But that ever phase you're doing that again in Ireland, there's such great options there. You know, Matt's suspended. Like, would that phase you if you were sort of sent into that department? No, I, could, I wouldn't care. To be fair. Once I'm on the pitch, as I said before, you know, I'll, I'll do my job, I'll do anything. I've, I've played enough positions of football to know my roles there, but no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't bother me. Neil Raiden, please. Hi, Nathan. Um, I think that was your first primary game just the weekend. Was it? Well, I'm to that's, 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 I don't remember. Yeah, <laughs> just kind of your feelings there, you, you didn't start the game, was that a decision explained to you, but then the, I guess, getting there last minute. Yeah, uh, got, obviously the gaffer talked to me, you know, it's, it's nothing, nothing, nothing to do with performance, you know, it's just it's the, the way how good our squad is really, you know, there's going to be rotation a lot this season and I'm happy with that, you know, I want to fest for the team and I know I'll be back in, so once I keep, once he keeps giving me confidence and I can play football, it won't bother me. So, uh, I think you were eight for the Fieri only game, what are your memories of that? Um, you know, I actually remember, I was coming back from a... Uh, the Cheerios concerts, yeah, I remember them, the charity ones. <laughs> I think I was with my da- my mum and my older brother, we were walking back to the train station and I think we were watching on the screen there and there was a big crowd of people waiting for the train watching it and yeah, everyone was fuming. <laughs> <laughs> so I just remember only people, that's all I remember. Who's playing the Cheerios? All I remember is JLS, so I don't remember anyone else. <laughs> 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 Philip? We were going to get a train on the set of just how do you assess the group from our point of view going into this window? And what would be a good window? A good window. Hard to say. A good window would be six points, wouldn't it? But we take that 100%. And I, I think we just go in there, we cause problems. I want. I think there's a lot of chances there. I think, a, well, especially at home, I think with the crowd behind us, we can do anything. I think we can go get a win easily. Away from home, I think we can cause so many problems. And I think we can nick something, honest to God. I think we can get something out of this game. You know, there are good teams, two top teams, but I think. We, I think if we four points, three points, anything is good. You know, I think we get something out of these two games. It puts us right in good contention. Maybe we can get back into it. Yeah, hundred percent. Mark, is then funny. Um, do you think you deflect the effort that in fact they played it last time round? Uh, do you think you can do that again? And what lessons do you can take from last time round for beating Wales? I think there's the lessons is that we know it's quality. You know, it's it's more not even one game. It's just this whole game. You know, it's every game he plays and causes anyone the problems. There's no way you can do it on your own. I think 1v1 he beats anyone. I think we have to defend as a unit against him. I think we have to defend as a team. We have to back each other. And if he does beat us, there has to be more people waiting waiting to come up against him. But we say that about him. But on the other wing, they have more quality. In the middle, they have quality. So it, it's it's about balancing it all. But yeah, he's a massive threat. We were able to deal on one so, but we have to draw confidence that and try again. Final question. I just want to eat your pen so close to scoring against France and Dublin. Did you say set pieces are a best chance? Uh, I wouldn't say our best chance was a big chance. I think we we're very strong set piece. I think we caused a lot of problems. I think we had a lot of big people in the in the squad and aggressive in the box, which is always nice to have. I think it's a massive part of the game. I think a chance is a chance at the end. It doesn't matter if it's from a set piece or open play. So I, I think it's a big it's a big part of the game. Yeah, I thought I was in, but <laughs> listen, we go again. <laughs> we try it. Thanks, guys. Just coming up. Coming up. Cheers, lads.